So for the first time you're hearing this, and that I knew from 1989 uh, all the way in time that you told me, yes. uh, which was two years later. That's right. That's right. This is the first time that I'm here. I didn't want to let you down. I wanted to go on the road, and I had such a good time. And you have to remember, too, this is before any symptoms really appeared. So I was fine yeah. until, you know, the, until the very Until about end. the very last part of the show there, exactly. you started to get a couple of symptoms here and there. And, right. And, and I'll tell you something, and I've told you a million times, I mean, the, the stamina, the strength, the dedication, and you didn't miss a cue. You didn't miss a rehearsal. Uh, you were there at all times, never ever complaining. You're talking about a trooper. And well, I think how neat for her to have such a good, a good little buddy to take such good care of her. And I'll tell you something Al said to me this afternoon, because I said, I love her, I love you too. It goes without saying, but I had never met Annette, and I just absolutely am such a big fan. And, and I said, I don't, I, I'm not quite sure how to talk to her about this, because I know everybody wants to know how she's feeling. And he said, you know what it boils down to? Annette is a lady who has been working her whole life, working hard. And the difference is she's working on something new now, but she's working hard. Well, she has such a great attitude. She I does. talk to her all and the time. And you know what, Annette? I was raised by my parents to believe absolutely mind over matter. And if, if, if you could get any more positive vibes, I mean, I don't think it's possible. Everybody wishes you absolutely the best because you are the neatest lady. And uh, oh, when we're going to come back, we're going to talk more with you and more with Frankie. We'll be back. is going to Bikini Beach <laughs> to have fun in the sun with that musical beach party gang. Frankie Avalon, Annette Funicello, Martha Heyer, Harvey Lembeck, Don Rickles, and special guest star Keenan Wynn. I am determined to prove that you young people are borderline cases leaning toward feeble-mindedness <laughs> with an abnormal preoccupation with sex. <laughs> with Frankie and Annette, and we're here talking about teen idols today, and I want, first of all, somebody did have something very nice to say to you, Frank. What did you say? And I think you should say it. Okay. Do I need to stand, stand up? up? Okay, well. Sure. I'm, Come I'm, down here so you don't look so much I, taller than I'm, me. I'm full of compliments. First of all, Vicki, you look great. You well, look thanks. wonderful. Frankie, great, great head of hair. Unbelievable. <laughs> Beautiful. And Hi, I, Annette, we couldn't hear you. What did you say? No, no. We call him helmet hair. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Right there. Uh -huh. And, Annette, I, I think you're adorable, and I wish you the best of luck, and uh, keep up the great attitude. Thank you. I will. Thanks a lot. I want to talk to you, too, about what it is like to have... Uh, such stardom thrust upon you when you're teenagers. I mean, how do you deal with that when you're a kid? And, and now we were talking about it uh, a little bit earlier, you know, yeah. how you don't even know what you have till it's gone, you know? Exactly, yes. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult growing up in the business, especially when you have a, a hit show like yours and like the Mickey Mouse Club and, and the adoration from so many people. And when you're so very young, it's, it's difficult to comprehend. I didn't know what was going on. Um, and mothers would come up to me and say, you're the best babysitter we've ever had. And, you know, I would say, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you liked the show. I never realized what, what was really happening until I had children of my own. Yeah, and, you probably had a babysitter of your own at the time, right? Uh, you know something? I wish there was a show like the Mickey Mouse Club, when my kids were growing up, because now I understand what parents meant when they talked about it. I'm not sure there are a bunch of kids around that are that talented anymore. You know, you all were just very a, a talented bunch of kids. Did I ever tell you that Cubby was our drummer on the Carol Burnett show? 
Really? Yeah, he was already. I walked in there the first day of rehearsal. I'm oh my God, it's Cubby O'Brien. Oh I just my went nuts. God. Oh yep. my God, he's such a good drummer. He's such a sweetheart. Oh, I mean, he was wonderful. Are we, you're not going to sleep, are you, Frankie? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, I, I just. No, we yeah, no. Sorry, uh, Frankie. I was fortunate, Annette, <laughs> as you know, I was fortunate to have Cub, a Cubby play drums for me on a, uh, a soundtrack uh, yes. of a picture called Grease where I did Beauty School Dropout. He was yes. the drummer in that. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. So he's worked with you the, were yeah. great in that movie, too. Oh, thank you. Tell us, but tell, you know, and you're one of those people that has gone through being, a, well, both of you, actually, being the teen idol, and yet you didn't, like, flip out or go nuts, and you've grown into adulthood rather gracefully. And, but how do you deal with all that fame when you're so young? Oh, I, I loved it. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine, like, a year before, I'd walk down, you know, the, the corridors of my school and... You know, nobody Did you would. go to real school? Yeah. Public high school? Probably South Philly High. How old were you, like, say, when Venus was a hit? I was about 20. Oh, you were old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so how, no, I mean, you were past. No, but then, then the next year, Vicky, all of a sudden, you, have, you know, there, there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of girls screaming. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was terrific. Where did you meet your wife? You I guys have been my... married too long. I met my wife. Yeah, we're married uh, 30 years. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And Kay is a gal tough enough to keep up with you. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, she just, just give me one sock, That's it's over. Right. That's it. But you know, uh, in 30 years, you know, we have a large family. Our children know your children. Eight and kids. We have eight children, eight. yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. The dining room table keeps ten. They're all growing up now and older than I am. Where'd you meet her? Is she a <laughs> <laughs> was she a fan, or how did you meet her? No, she didn't even know who I was. No, actually, no. She had heard of Frankie Avalon, but uh, it was Rona Barrett was a good friend of ours, and she introduced us. Uh, I was out here doing a picture. I forget what picture it was. It must have been Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea or something like that. And we met uh, the one night I was playing cards with my friends, and... Rona brought her in, we said hello, and fell in love, and I said to the guys, I said, see that, uh, see that gal? I'm gonna marry her. And they said, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. In about four months, we were married. How neat. Now, Annette, tell everybody how you got started, because you asked me early how I got started, and I, so I asked you, how did you get started? In the business. Annette? Oh, I'm hello, sorry, hello. I thought yeah, you were well, so that's okay. Me. I was listening you, to no, the you story about meeting Annette. That's Annette. lunch. Come on. <laughs> how did you get I, well, started? I'll tell you, it's just one of those good luck stories. Um, I was dancing since I was five years old. I was a very dedicated ballerina. And at the end of every school year, um, your dancing teacher puts on a recital. Uh -huh. And this particular one was at an outdoor theater, kind of a, a mini Greek theater. Walt Disney was sitting in the audience unannounced. He had known the conductor. And the conductor said, I know you're looking for Mouseketeer material, so why don't you come and sit in the audience and, and maybe you'll see somebody. And he saw me dance. I had the lead in Swan Lake. And he saw me dance. And a couple of days later, he called the school and uh, asked if I would come in for an audition. So it really happened quite by accident. And it was just one of those out-of-the-world things. Isn't that neat? We're going to bring out uh, a couple of your other buddies right now. We're going to talk. My next guest was actually so hot that once his fans had to be hosed down when he opened a donut shop with his pompadour and his sexy sounds like Tiger and Turn Me Loose. Hello, Nick. Hello. Twisting. Oh, did you hear me? I have feedback. I'm so excited. This is Fabian. How you doing? Well, hi there. How are you? And now you're about to meet one of television's first young heroes as the star of the smash TV series 77 oh Sunset Strip. He pulled in over 15,000 fan letters a week. He one time, oh, one me. month, landed 26 ma magazine covers. And who could forget that hit single? Cookie, cookie, lend me your comb. Cookie, cookie. <laughs> Please welcome Ed Burns. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Look at this. 